What's going on, everybody? Aaron Guyette here on The Living Fit Show, and I have got a doozy for you. I have the incredible honor and pleasure uh, to host Richard Amaker on here. He is a free skier and a ski coach out of Nindas, uh, and I probably butchered that, Nindas, uh, Switzerland. And uh, on Instagram, you can check out probably one of, and maybe I'm biased because I love the mountains, but probably one of the most beautiful Instagram channels at Richard Amaker. Um, so, and obviously that it's in the show notes, check it out down below and feel free to click through and, and check out his beautiful photos and beautiful videos. Uh, without further ado, Richard, thanks yeah, so much for thanks. hopping on. Thanks to you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first, you know, typically we're like, oh, how'd you get into fitness? But I want to know, aside from the fact that because you're um, born where you're born, uh, you probably came out of the womb with skis on, but I just, how did you get into skiing and, and into the uh, actual competing uh, with skiing? So yeah, I started uh, in the same time as walking actually. Uh, so when I was two years old, um, I'm living five minutes away from the ski resort and we have a beautiful ski resort, really big, the four valleys with, uh, Verbien and, uh, Vizona, et cetera. And, um, yeah, I started skiing. It was like normal for me because my dad was a ski teacher and ski coach. So, yeah, I came, uh, I went with him, uh, on the, on the skis pretty early and then he coached me during, uh, during several, several years. And, uh, yeah, then I moved to Alpine ski racing. Then I'm, I'm 19. I stopped it. I stopped it to, to start with free riding. And, uh, I did, uh, six years, uh, competitions and uh three years on the free ride world tour and since 2015 um i stopped with uh with competing and uh going more into like ski coaching ski instructor and uh also like uh video uh, may yeah, making video uh on instagram and uh, yeah it's pretty fun and uh not too bad for living <laughs> Yeah, not too bad at all. I, I know I feel um, s incredibly blessed or gifted with the fact that I'm only 30 minutes from the resort, but then here you are with five minutes. So uh, yeah, how do you not become a world-class skier if <laughs> you're just five minutes? Yeah, right? that's, um, yeah, of course, this is a gift for me. Um, I have the privilege to, to grow up in these mountains and uh, near to the ski resort. Uh, it's incredible. And, uh, then I have the chance also to move a lot around the world to ski and to see other culture or their ski resort. And, um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that, that was, that was actually one of my childhood dreams was to, um, and it, it, for me, it was it, snowboarding. I, I did both. I skied and snowboarded. And then later on, actually in the Marine Corps, I did some telemarking. Um, obviously probably not uh, on the level uh, that you are, but, but that was like one of my, you know, childhood fantasies was like to be able to travel the world and snowboard every single mountain. Um, so uh, selfishly, I've got to ask, have you been to North Idaho? Never been. I have been to, I've been to you as for skiing in Salt Lake City. Uh -huh. Um, but this okay. is the only place I went, uh, in us, I went to Canada too, Riverstock, mm -hmm. Whistler and, uh, yeah, yeah, North America, that's it. But I really w want to come back for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do like a little, uh, us tour. Well, I mean, Whistler is, is pretty incredible, right? <laughs> that, um, so how would you, do you, do you rate? the mountains or do they each have their own sort of value uh, in your mind like how to how do you how do you kind of view a resort or view an, an i really can't say i have one experience was better than the other every experience is different everything is different every conditions is different you meet different people and yeah that's mm -hmm. yeah it's just different and all the trip I did, uh, for skiing was all really cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, if you're doing something that you love, that's a huge win, I, I feel like. And then if you're able to do something you love and then and travel around and meet other people that are doing that thing that they love. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, hard to beat yeah. that uh, for sure. Right. So do you do any, um, any fitness stuff or any, uh, like off season stuff? Or are you always like in season? How, how does that, how does that look for so, you? So um, during the last past years, um, I skied between August till end of April, beginning of May. So when I'm doing this, it's pretty tough to, to do something, um, on the side stretching stuff and everything, but nothing uh, really big. And then in summertime, like uh, biking, walking around, um, te some tennis playing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. And, um, and this year I just came back from, uh, New Zealand. So I, I started skiing in June. I just came back. Now I have maybe one or two weeks off and then going back uh, again on the skis. Yeah. So maybe this, this, uh, this one month, uh, without skiing, I'm going a little bit to the gym and, um, and yeah, if the weather is still good going for work, going for, for biking for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So basically just staying active and then, and staying on the skis. I mean, do you wake up every day needing like, okay, I, it's not, it's not a good day. If I'm, if I'm not strapped into my skis going down some beautiful run somewhere in the world. No, I don't think so. But, um, you know, I'm in love with skiing. That's for sure. And if I can do, mm -hmm as much as possible skiing, this is, uh, this is cool. But in the same time, see if one day, uh, maybe the weather is not so good or I'm feeling a little bit tired, easy. I'm staying home and doing some, some other stuff. And that's also cool to have some day off on the, uh, of the snow. Cause, uh, yeah, it's quite tiring to be on the snow every time and, uh, waking up early and then you have a long journey and uh, long days. And, uh, but, um, yeah, it's, it's fine. You know, when you love it, you, you don't count. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, okay. So talk me through then sort of your average day. Are you typically doing now a lot of, it seems to me like that's your kind of main focus, main purpose is to, you've, you've gained a ton of experience, you've gained a ton of understanding and knowledge, and now you're trying to, you know, teach that knowledge, coach that knowledge to other people. Is that your typical day or does your typical day revolve around, you know, some of your own personal skiing, some of your own personal technique, skill building, and then coaching or kind of how does that uh, obviously typical or average day, not, I think uh, if, uh, yeah, not like different day. typical day, uh, during the winter. Um, most of the time for sure is coaching, coaching with athletes from Alpine ski racing or, uh, free ride, uh, junior, or also the future ski instructor. I'm training them to pass the exam. So this is quite of the main, my main job actually. Then I've, when I've got some, some free time, um, I'm going skiing for improving myself or, uh, also for uh, creating uh, video content, but also when I'm doing yeah. video content, of course, I'm improving myself too. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's always like when you're training someone, when you're training the Alpine ski racer, free ride or future ski instructor, the level is quite high. So you need to be at the good level and to stay in this level. And I'm trying to do, to do it for, yeah, to, to stay performance and, uh, with, with them. So what would you say is, is the, I mean, obviously I'm sure there's a myriad, a ton of things that you could get better at or, 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 or do well, but what would you say is like the one thing that you try to evoke or try to teach, um, or try to have your students learn about getting better or getting better in their, 
individual, whether it's Alpine or, or um, free riding or, uh, or um, I'm always this example with this, with tennis, uh, find the flow when the tennis player finding the flow, then they can uh, play really good. And in skiing is exactly the same, trying to find the flow and it's going to be much more easier when you find this flow. Of course, you need to have a certain basic on the technique, but when you have this, then trying to, yeah, to have a turn, some turns with the flow, and it's going to be much more easier to, to the student, to the Alpine ski racer or for myself too, actually. Yeah. So, okay. This is, this is good. And I'm sure it's probably the same with, with, uh, video making, right. Filmmaking. Um, what, what, how would you articulate or how would you explain flow or finding the flow? Um, you know, it's like a, a river going down a mountain and finding his way on, yeah, an easy way actually. And for us, it's exactly the same, trying to go down the mountain to do, to do our run and to play with the terrain. Uh, sometimes it's like we have flat terrain, we have steep terrain, we have different snow, we have some bumps, some hole. So we have a little bit of everything and just trying to play with the terrain and finding the flow with the terrain and with the, the snow condition too. So it's, it's when your effectiveness as, you know, a tech technician, right. Having certain, you know, like you said, basic technique, basic skills where that applies to the variability of, of the terrain. Um, but in a, in the most efficient, would you, uh, the most efficient manner, am I hearing that right? Did I say that back in a generalized? No, no, or it's, uh, it's right. It's exactly it is. Making one with the mountain. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's interesting that you say that because, uh, I, one of my really good friends, Marcus Martinez, he's also a kettlebell instructor and that I would say that that is his take on kettlebells, right. And moving kettlebells and, and working out with kettlebells. Uh, you know, sometimes he's, he's like, more isn't always better. Uh, he's like better is yeah. better. Right. Or, uh, and some, and he's like, and it's uh, sometimes just in flow state or in flow. And so would you, would you liken your finding the flow going down the mountain, you know, adjusting, being able to adjust to the terrain with your skills and, and finding a, a, a smooth and, um, almost effortless approach, even though obviously you're expending effort. Um, would you liken that to like a Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls in his heyday uh, when, you know, when he is in flow state or is, is just feeling it or in the zone uh, dumping, you know, basket after basket, it, would that be something that you would find that was similar? Uh, a similar yeah, of parallel course. maybe? Um, well, for sure. You need to practice a lot before uh, to find this, this, uh, this, uh, this flow and this, uh, effortless, uh, skiing actually, but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, practice, practice, practice. And then, um, when you have the abilities or the technique to do it, then you need to work again on it to, to make one with the train. And, uh, that's a lot of time I'm trying to, yeah, to pass this message. Uh, work on it and work on the, on your flow afterwards. And you will have much more, uh, fun on your skis afterwards. If you can, uh, really play with everything, uh, on the mountains. Yeah. I love that. And is, are you, uh, obviously you're able to experience that and feel that yourself when you watch people ski are you able to, you know, point out like, oh, that person has found the flow or, oh man, that person is. Yeah, a rough exactly. time. <laughs> yeah. of course, with the experience and with my knowledge, I can see, okay, this person is struggling for doing some turns already by the technique and then by the flow. And, 
and after of course when i see somebody who's playing playing with the with the terrain i can say okay this guy this guy is good and uh yeah it's it's cool to watch him yeah absolutely well and that is something i think all humans can agree on is you don't know why it's beautiful, you know, watching somebody like a Michael Jordan just doing so well or or a skier just effortlessly making some, but yeah. it's beautiful, right? There's something like attractive and beautiful and it's about that. so simple. Um, and that's, and that's also, that's yeah. also, uh, the thing, this is crazy, you know, it's doing something super, super hard. But you're looking at him and he's, uh, he's, he's looking like, yeah, it's simple. Yeah. And then, and, and, you know, it's not that simple, <laughs> man. I, yeah, I watch like some of your videos and I was like, man, he does, he makes that look effortless. That is incredible. And I know how hard that is and that is incredible. <laughs> right. So with your video, um, is there, do you have like a crew? Do you have uh, people that, that help you out in this or, or are you kind of trying to figure out how to do it uh, like just on your own or is it like how, how do you go about creating some of this content, whether it's pictures or video or uh, So whatever. I am by myself most of the time. Uh, but then of course I've, I've got some collaboration with, uh, with my partners um, and uh, then I can take the content from them. But um, yeah, most most of the time I'm I'm by my own, and uh, my brother is uh, is filming me. So so that's pretty cool. He's also a ski instructor, so a good skier. Because yeah, mm -hmm. to know when you are when you when I'm doing this this stuff on skis, you have to have also a good cameraman and a good uh, good skier uh, beside uh, beside you. Otherwise, it's pretty complicated to yeah. to have good content. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, and, and so then I'm sure you guys are talking back and forth about, you know, when you want him to come in close and when you want him to go away and what angles are, are you, I'm sure you're, are, are you thinking about all of that stuff and then also how it's framed? Yeah, and it, like that? It's, it's quite crazy because my brother is not at all a creative man. Not at all. Oh, okay. Um, but we find the, the feeling quite, <laughs> uh, quite super fast. And I just, uh, yeah, I just, um, coach him actually what I want to do some for, for images. So close up or maybe a little bit more, uh, far away or from, uh, from the side, from behind, from forward. And, uh, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it went pretty fast to, to find ourselves, uh, uh, matching actually. Yeah. And so do you, uh, do you sell any of this content to other people or is it mainly for your own, uh, YouTube, Instagram socials or how does that, how, how do you, how do you work with the content? So I'm, I'm working, uh, with my own partners of, uh, ski partners, uh, close partners, uh, the ski resort partners. So some other brands and I'm doing contents for them about the products. And in the same times, also some videos are just for myself and for, for the social network. And, um, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I have also some, some small collaboration. Um, yeah. Um, like not, not with, uh, in concurrence with my partners, you know, you know what I mean? And, um, and yes. yeah, it's always collapse um, with uh, with the ski industry. They have a link with the ski industry. Yeah. So so obviously you were able to go to New Zealand this last summer, and and that's evidenced not only with what you said, but also on your Instagram. You can see, like, oh man, he's he's on the snow, and it's summer for us in the northern hemisphere but clearly southern hemisphere it's the opposite so that's nice um are did you see a um obviously there was a certain time where there just really wasn't 
much travel at all unless it was essential. But did you see a lot less uh, of your partners, you know, being able to send you to different places or, um, or were you, was it you that was mainly choosing to, to go to these other places to film content and then give that to your, to your partners? Um, How did that work? Uh, especially yeah, during yeah. COVID and all that. Um, I was choosing to, to go over there. Um, you know, yes, yeah, since two years, we, we couldn't really move around and I said, okay, now it's time maybe to, to explore again, a little bit the world. And, um, uh, I went there for ski coaching also for a ski club. And in the, in the same time, so I had some, some day off and, uh, I could, uh, I could film and that was crazy because, um, skiing is so small and, uh, I went there and just a guy from, from, uh, from a carve, uh, just joined me and say, Oh, you here, uh, we can film together. And, uh, I said, okay, let's go. Let's try to do some, some stuff for carve and for myself. And, uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, a lot of people, so many connection I got, I've got already with, uh, with, uh, some of their, some guys over there. And yeah, that's why the, the ski is so small. And, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Actually, you're going at the yeah. other side of the world and you know, a lot of people and that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that is awesome. That's, yeah, that's the best, right? So um, a, a few of our, we'll probably have quite a few listeners that are from the West Coast here in the US. And um, and then I'm also thinking about, you know, we have Schweitzer just up the road. That's where I'm 30 minutes from. And then we have uh, Silver Mountain and Lookout Pass and, and a few other resorts around this area. And then just to the north of us, just barely to the north is uh, Whistler, right? In, in British Columbia and in Canada. So uh, what what's a way or is there a way for them to connect with you? And do you do online or, or do you have videos and, and what's a way that they can get some of this information that obviously, you know, those that are able to see you in person, you know, are just absolutely gifted with. Um, but then if, if I can't be with you in person, maybe you're, you haven't done the tour in, in the U S yet or whatever, how can I get, uh, access to some of what you're doing and some of your knowledge? And so first they, they have to come to Switzerland. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there you go. Well, there you um, go. Calling it more out. Seriously, um, I'm I'm working uh, on the online video coaching actually. So um, I'm yep. already working here with uh, with some uh, ski instructor um, in that that direction. Like they are filming something, they send me the videos, and then I can teach them. Okay. Maybe you can do that better, that better. And then I send, I send to them also some exercise and then the film maybe one week after, and we can see a little bit the difference. And, um, yeah, that, that would be a, a concept that, uh, that's in my mind for, for, for a long time. And, uh, normally this, this fall, I will try to to just uh, launch, launch this, uh, this idea, uh, on my social network and, uh, mm -hmm. find out if, if it's working or not. And, uh, and maybe reaching a little bit more person, more people in the world and not only in Switzerland or not mm -hmm. only the person that can came in Switzerland, but, uh, also be connected mm -hmm. with the world. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. And it seems like, I mean, obviously there, nothing beats in person, right? Like that connection and, and all of that stuff. But man, how cool is it that I can go learn some incredible techniques from a pro, from a master, you know, from somebody who has uh, done this since yeah. they could walk, right? Uh, versus, you know, maybe going and and still getting decent instruction, but maybe not as, as high of caliber or not as, as excellent of, of instruction. And so, yeah, just so, so cool that, I mean, shoot, we're able to talk and what, what's it, what's in the background there? What are we, what are we overlooking? Oh, I can show you actually. Oh, yes. <laughs> like here's another prime example, right. Of online being just such a cool yeah. tool sometimes. We have the valley of, uh, of the valley actually. 
So just down there is like um, is like Sion, the the main city of uh, of Alice. It's pretty small, huh? It's mm -hmm. not uh, it's not like in the the, the city in US. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm actually now I'm in a really small city as well. Yeah. I, I, I did live in a couple of some big city areas, you know, in Southern California and, and whatnot. Um, and I've traveled to a lot of the, like New York and, uh, Miami and a bunch of places, uh, for my work. So th that's been really cool. Much like you, right. Being able to travel to a bunch of cool places, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually, my heart is, is for the smaller city. I, you know, cause everybody waves, yeah. everybody helps everybody, you know, there's just something beautiful about that. I just, I can't get yeah, enough that's of it. True. So, that's true. Yeah. But that is an epic, an epic bad, view eh? right there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so which way point, uh, which way is the resort then from uh, where you're at yeah. right now? So this is down the valley. So the valley, the mm -hmm. resort is like opposite side. Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. And are you right now? Are you five minutes, or was that? Oh, when no, you were right now, kid? five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a, a kid, minutes, it was yeah. like two just... minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, you like downgraded. Younger, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, and so, do you do you just grab your grab your gear and walk? Uh, or I need I need to driving? get my car because. Yeah, it's it's quite steep, and I don't have any bus stop uh, yeah. just next to me. But uh, yeah, around the ski resort, normally you can also go by bus or or by walk if you're not too far. But no, I'm a little bit too far nice. to to go by walk in the morning. And and so this is yeah, the Four, Four Valleys, Valleys Resort. Yeah. Is that what it's called? And and so that's literally the Four Valleys behind you. Um, and then? One of them, or one of the valleys. One of them is <laughs> here. Is like Arizona, uh -huh. and uh, and then the other one is also uh, on that side, on the other side. Nice. And and is is so Nindes is that the city that you're talking about? The yeah, exactly. City? Uh, not that small. Uh, actually, we we are seven thousand people, and uh, oh, wow. Sion. Where's the main city in uh, in Valle? Maybe twenty, twenty five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, not that any of the listeners the listeners want to hear this, but I, like I'm putting that. That's now a a box that I want to check before. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Before I go, yeah. right? I want to be able to travel, travel, and then you're more than welcome and, here. See. Yeah, no, that would be that would be incredible. Um, I got to get my kids onto onto some skis though. So this year, this will probably be the year. So last year, I was building yeah. this house that I live in, and uh, so this next year, we'll probably get my kids on some skis and um, hopefully. So my wife, uh, we actually went to. So you were saying you went yeah. to Salt Lake City, yeah. like Park City, around there, right? Um, to do some skiing. So she went snowboarding with me. And she had the greatest time, like for, for two days or three days. But on the last day, she caught her back edge and just ended up hitting the back of her head and like, ev you know, everything went everywhere. Uh, and she was like, from because that was the finish, that was the final moment. That's how she remembers the whole time. And I'm like, oh, my heart is broken. I'm like, no, no, if you keep going, it will be different. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. We will see. So, but that, so where did you go? Did you go to a couple of resort resorts when you were in, um, kind of Salt Lake city, park city area? Or no, just park uh, city? not park city. Uh, I went to park city, but I went also to mm -hmm. snowbird. Yeah, exactly. Snowbird. We yeah. had a stop mm -hmm. uh, of the free world tour over there back in the days when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. When you're younger and yeah, doing crazy, crazy stuff. <laughs> Yeah. So do you still do some of the crazier things or is it more just finding the flow and, and enjoying the, the time on the mountain? Where, where, where are you at? Of course, of uh, when, when it's snowing, of course, I'm going to do some free riding, but 
um, not not the same as uh, when I was uh, younger. When I was younger, I was that was my job actually, uh, just going and skiing on the free ride and doing some competition. And now, um, yeah, when it's snowing, for sure, I'm doing I'm going off base for sure. But um, normally, I'm doing more like on slope uh, things. And uh, but on slope things, I'm just trying also to be creative and not only doing like a, a right turn and left turn, but uh, trying to be yeah, yeah to to be out of, out of bound, bounds a little bit. And uh, oh, okay, yeah, and not not yeah. just out of. And I'm I sorry, have but, um, yeah. I have a new project is coming this fall. Is like uh, I can't say maybe the the name of it but uh it's gonna be pretty interesting and pretty creative i've never seen that before so it could be interesting and this project will be also so we filmed last spring and uh we're gonna film again uh this winter and hopefully next winter in uh in new zealand too because i'm i'm going back oh wow here. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Um, so with this project, are you filming in Switzerland then and in New Zealand, just those two places? Or, or no, I think uh, we, we're going to stay here uh, for this winter. And then, uh, yeah, next summer in, in New Zealand. Yeah. And is this like a, a, and you can tell me to stop asking you questions if you need to. Is this a collaboration with your partners or with mm -hmm. other skiers? No, it's or a just personal project. And uh, on this project, they have a uh, other skier, a uh, freestyler skier, actually, from Switzerland, uh, Nicolas Vignier. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we just mm -hmm. spend like a few days together and uh, trying to, to have some, some fun on skis and uh, to be creative together. Awesome. So what is the best way for people to connect with you? If they're, they're watching, they're watching this and they're like, man, I gotta, I want to find out about this project or I got to chat with him or I, I want to learn from so, him. What's the best uh, way? Right now, the best way is uh, Instagram for sure. And, um, mm -hmm. with this project, I will start my, uh, my YouTube channel. So that's going to be the first video on my YouTube channel. And, um, Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to develop a little bit more the the YouTube YouTube uh, YouTube channel with maybe longer video, maybe some uh, tutorial video, maybe some other personal uh, vlogging or something like this. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward and uh, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it's been absolutely my pleasure. Uh, I've been smiling ear to ear the entire time, Richard. Thank you so much for, for hopping on. And we ask uh, for all of our brand new guests, we ask the same question at the very end. And, and the question is, what is living fit to you? And obviously not living fit the brand, but living fit uh, the concept or the principle. Um, so yeah, and we've had all sorts of different answers from the ethereal and way out there to the very didactic and pragmatic. Um, but yeah, so what is living fit to you? Um, it's like uh, a few years ago, I was like maybe more into like practical things like uh, doing sports, uh, doing uh, eating healthy uh, and everything. And today maybe I'm going to answer it differently. And I will say just do what you love if you can do it and uh and this is living fit actually just trying to find happiness uh, in your job in your activities in your sport whatever but just believe in it and uh, yeah just have fun oh i love it that's a great great finish thank you so no much again